This is How Dreams Come True, an innovation from a Polish technologist is taking the world by storm. Just a few days ago, Tomasz Paten unveiled his latest creation to the world, the Volonaut Airbike, his newest child. But how did it all begin? Well, this is humanity's greatest dream. Everyone has had that dream of floating up, waving their arms and flying freely. People have always been fascinated by speed and freedom. I know plenty of people around the world see it the same way. Jetson is meant to be the Tesla of flying cars. Deliveries will start at the end of this year, and our mission is to move transportation from the ground into the sky. How far do you live from here? Four minutes by Jetson, 15 minutes by car. Four minutes by Jetson? Do you fly home in the Jetson? Not yet, but that's the next step. I want to start flying here to the office every day. Thomas, who are you today? I love creating, I love building, especially things that bring joy, things that are fast, things that fly. You're an engineer, a visionary, a futurist? A bit from each of those categories but everything that personally gives me pleasure, everything that is ambitious. I love watching how you create it, how it works later, how it affects people, what can be changed in the world with it. The long-awaited Jetson race isn't just a contest, it's the world's first head-to-head -head showdown of EV tolls, or electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. Unlike helicopters, these craft rely on multiple electric rotors, advanced flight computers, and lightweight carbon fiber frames to lift straight into the air, quietly, cleanly, and without a runway. Think of them as the next evolution of personal transportation, part drone, part sports car, all electric. On this steep, unforgiving course, pilots weave just inches from bright pylons and one another, their cockpits alive with G-forces and the whine of high-torque motors. Adrenaline pulses through every tight banking turn as the racers skim the slope at eye-watering speed. We've got brand new, more powerful motors and completely redesigned arms made by a company that builds components for supercars they're lighter, stronger, and far more optimized. As you probably know, carbon fiber lets you do amazing things. And the best part is that you can align the fibers exactly where you need strength. That gives you parts that are both ultra light and incredibly tough. This is a four axis joystick. Here's your altitude control. Push up to climb, pull down to descend, tilt the stick forward to fly forward. To take off, just nudge it upward and the Jetson lifts off on its own. And the red button, no rockets or lasers, just the auto land feature. Press it and the Jetson lands itself. You don't have to do a thing. It senses altitude with a bottom mounted radar and takes care of the touchdown. How many hours a day do you work? I don't work. I don't consider this a job, it's a pleasure. Sometimes it's hard, but the most important thing is to create, to be doing something. So how many hours a day do you spend creating? All day long. I feel that when the sun rises, I have to get up to, that's basically my cue to start the day. Now in the summer, that's 5.30 or 6 a.m. I go for a run, take a cold shower, read a few emails, reply to them, and then come here to work, not to work, actually, to do cool things. Are you aware of just how well-known Jetson is? For example, in the United States? Wherever we traveled with this Jetson, whenever we displayed it outside to take a picture, usually either a person or a group of people would stop, and many of those people knew what it was. 
And where was the idea for the Jetsons born? Maybe something you watched or were inspired by? Do you recall such a moment? There wasn't a single moment. Uh, I've always worked with flying devices, drones, remote controlled helicopters. They kept getting larger. For over a decade, I had a company uh, doing aerial photography and film, and the cameras just kept getting bigger and bigger. Uh, there was a need for a larger payload, so it became apparent that not much more work would be needed to fly a person. I always had a few ideas in my head. I was drawing and sketching. I remember back in architecture school, I designed a helicopter for myself with a number of electric motors connected together in a carbon fiber frame. Even from childhood, there were a few movies that inspired me a lot, where a group of kids build an airplane together. So it was definitely something I had wanted to do for a long time. This is basically our storage area where all the prototypes end up. And here you can see the very first Jetson. It was built in Italy around late 2017 and then stored in Poland at a place that caught fire. That's why it looks a bit rough now. It didn't actually burn, but as you can see, it partially melted. It's a cool bit of history. That was really the very beginning. In just two or three weeks, we managed to get the first flight done. Right from the start, I had sketched a rough design in my notebook, showing the geometry of the frames. Then I drove to the nearest store that carried aluminum profiles, the simple kind you see here, and laid everything out on the floor. I measured, cut them. Two weeks later, we had something assembled. We added ballast, and those were our first unmanned flights. Eventually, the time came to prove to ourselves that this concept really worked. This here is our third prototype. It had already been tested with a parachute. Those were the first tests we carried out. It looks a bit rough. I'm not proud of every single thing we've done, but sometimes you need to put something together quickly to see if it works. I used to live here for about four months. This was actually my apartment. Right where the 3D printers are now, I had a bed, and farther back was the bathroom. That's all there was. In the beginning, there was no air conditioning, so you can imagine how it felt in the summer. It's a perfect solution. You can. Change parts from one day to the next. A new project, you upload it, test it. It was a place that was available for purchase. It's nice with the airport, so we could separate ourselves, have our own playground. First of all, I don't see the Jetson one as some kind of point where something ends and something begins. This is, I would say, just one small step in the whole journey. I don't attach great importance to this moment. It will be wonderful that the product will start to live its own life, as you asked. Am I not afraid that? It will end up in the hands of people who will publish materials. That's great. That's fantastic. We'll see how people really want to use this product, how they want to have fun with it. And well, the content they will create will definitely, definitely score points for us too. And the recognition of the product itself, the recognition of perhaps this form of entertainment because Jetson 1 is still a recreational vehicle. The speed of this latest Jetson will be 100. Still 102 kilometers per hour. Our recent tests, and we're doing more and more of them, have shown that the speed right above the ground of 102 kilometers per hour is not the coolest or safest thing for our customers, so we've reduced it to right above the ground at the lowest altitude to 60 kilometers per hour and only when you ascend a bit higher, where you can use a parachute, can you accelerate to 102 kilometers per hour. And how about the weather conditions? You know, that was also a very important thing for us to make jets in one weather resistant. Now, it can stand outside, even if there's a bit of rain. You can even fly it in the rain. It won't be pleasant, but we've sealed the whole thing. 
Here's the spot where, back when I was living at the office, I loved to start the day. I'd hike up here at sunrise, take in the panoramic view, clear my head and step out of the chaos of building the company. A place where I could sit alone and think. I have other favorite places now, but this is the one I visited most often. Each morning it was still in shade, so I'd settle in and reflect on what needed to change, both in the project and in the company itself. Lifting transportation off the ground and into the air, that's the magic. You're actually flying. It's humanity's oldest dream. Everyone's dreamed of floating, flapping their arms, soaring freely. I love to create. Whatever I work on has to bring me real joy, and I know plenty of people around the world feel exactly the same way. So what would I like to do after Jetson? Space, unquestionably. If I say I want to build rockets and run the best rocket building company out there, it probably sounds overambitious, but that dream is always in the back of my mind. The natural direction for Jetson's development is the United States. Definitely, that's, we've talked about this before. It's a slightly different mindset. People there are more willing to take risks. Aren't you a bit afraid of moving to the States? Absolutely not. It's, it's the place, I think, that Jetson, or all the companies, I plan for the future will finally be able to grow, to spread their wings. <laughs>